Hey everybody, welcome to Andrew Ains with Golf Academy. As always, you're very welcome to the video today. Great to have you along watching. If you're new to the channel, first time watching the videos, um, maybe if you like the content, consider hitting that subscribe button, would be amazing. Got another little putter review for you today of putters that have just come into the studio on my new putting area, which is amazing. Really happy with it. This one's from Mizuno, or Mizuno, dependent on your preference of how you like to pronounce it. Let's go and talk a little bit about Mizuno's putter history. They've been making putters for many, many years. Mizuno tend to be thought of as an iron company predominantly, but they've always made some nice putters. And um, they released a range probably, I think, maybe three years ago now. It's definitely before the pandemic, called the Encraft which was amazing, lovely. I think they did four or five designs, uh, mallets and blades and all sorts of styles. Three different finishes, which had continued into this. We've got the sort of the matte stainless silver finish. You've got the black and then you've got the, uh, the blue, which is a lovely finish. This is a new range and they've come up with <laughs> a name I'm really not sure how to pronounce. I get where it's come from. It's called O-M-O-I. So M-O-I obviously standing for moment of inertia. In a nutshell, <clears throat> excuse me, moment of inertia is a resistance to twisting to try and keep the head more stable. And when you get M-O-I, which is very high, the putter or the driver will stay quite stable. It's all to do with where they position the weight. So I'm not sure how you pronounce this. O-M-O-I or O-M-O-I, not sure. Anyone out there know how you pronounce this? Uh, let me know. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about it. This is the O3 model, which is a, is a mallet. Um, it's not what you'd call a big mallet. I suppose you'd call this a mini, mini mallet in design. It's like most mallet putters are. It's face balanced. You can tell if a putter's face balanced. You just bal find its balance point and the face points to the sky. Generalizing again, face balance putters tend to suit putting strokes which go straight back and through, but not always the case. I've seen people putt really well with mallets who have a slight arc to the stroke or even a strong arc. So beautifully crafted, it's got a milled face, it's forged out of 1025 steel. On the bottom of the club, here, if we can get a little close up on it, you'll see we've got adjustable weights. So when you buy the putter, you also get a weight kit, which has different sets of weights. Now these have got eight gram weights. You think you get five gram weights and you get 13 gram weights. So you can customize the weight of the putter. Why would you do that? Well, theories again on slower greens, certainly over here in the UK where the greens get quite slow because the grass is a bit longer. You may benefit from having a heavier weighted putter. So you'd put your 13 gram weights in there. Summertime when the green gets very fast, you may want a slightly lighter putter. So you can customize the weight of the putter by moving the weights around, which is, which is pretty neat. Um, we've got a blackout shaft in here. and We've got a great grip. This is a Lamkin Sync Fit Pistol oversized style grip, you know, super stroke sort of style thickness. Um, beautiful looking putter. This is in the silver finish. But as I said earlier, you can get it in the in black and in this, um, I think it's called Ionic Blue, but it's sort of a light blue color. Lovely finish to it. You get a pretty funky cover with it, as you do with most putters these days. Um, Velcro. I'm not massively keen on Velcro closures because they wear out. I think you're much better off with magnetic closures. Um, they last just last longer, but it is a great looking putter. It's very, very premium. The price of this, depending on where you buy your equipment, £249. And we're tending to see putters being around that sort of price point now. As we hit a couple of putts with this, my first comment is, for me, it sits very upright. I tend to putt anyway with the toe up. Uh, it's just the way I putt. So this sits quite upright for me, which is which is good. You know, from a, a teaching perspective, we teach people to set up, you know, quite tall with the arms hanging, trying to get the eyes over the ball to produce this sort of pendulum-like stroke. But as it sits behind the ball, 
you've got the big center line there to help with alignment. I appreciate that I've got the cover. We like to try and keep the covers on these protective covers on our putters in the studio. It just helps preserve the putter um, so it doesn't get knocked around on the shelf. And yeah, I'm not gonna get 100% of the feel off this because I've got this thin little plastic cover, but it, it gives us an idea. Let's have a little roll with this and see how we get on. Get myself a bit more upright. Beautiful, plastic cover on or not, that gives a great feel off the face. Love the grip, very, very tactile. Hold that. Bad stroke. Let's go one more. Got a chance. Really nice roll. You won't see that on camera, but as that ball took off, it was just kind of rolling end over end over end. So it was producing very little skid. I think we're in an amazing time for putters and putter technology. There are so many good putters out there, folks. You know, take your pick from Scotty Cameron to Ping to TaylorMade to Odyssey, Bettinardi's and Cobras. You know, there are so many great Titleists. Uh, sorry, Scotty Cameron, of course, Titleist. Um, so many great putters out there. How do you choose a putter? Great question, isn't it? Just personal preference, really. We've seen a lot more people use um, the mallet style putter these days. But at the end of the day, you'll pick a putter up and you think, wow, that feels great, looks great. And go on that instinct. If you pick a putter up and you like the look and the feel of it, then that's often the one that's for you. Putter lengths, we tend to see more 34 inch putters than 35. But again, that's personal preference. So there we go. It's the uh, M O I M O I from Mizuno M Craft. Beautiful putters. Check out their website. There are lots more in this range. I've only got this 03 in at the moment. I've got a feeling I've pre-ordered a few more. Mizuno have had a lot of supply issues this year. So a lot of our pre-book orders, which we'd normally get in a well, month away now, we're in August 2022, this video. I would normally get this stock coming in in like February, maybe March time. But Mizuno, bless them, have had serious supply issues with everything. Um, so we're still getting our pre-book stuff coming through, which should have arrived in February, which is kind of like a nice surprise when it comes in. But not too great for Mizuno, who struggled really badly with their custom fit program this year in terms of supply. There'll be people watching this video have ordered Mizuno irons and I've been waiting 60, 90, you know, longer than that. And it's it's not Mizuno's fault, really. They just run into these huge supply issues with shafts and grips. And then there's been massive backlogs of orders. So when the new stock of shafts and grips arrive and heads, that fulfills the backlog. And then it's sort of self-perpetuating. It starts another backlog. So they'll catch up. It's a great company, it's a great brand, and I just feel a little bit sorry for them that they've been caught on the back foot a bit. Um, but anyway, that's, that was pandemic problems and supply chain issues. Hey, thanks for watching the video today. It's always great to review a putter. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're using. You know, always interested to hear what sort of putters you've got out there. What's your experience of using a mallet putter or a blade putter? What's your favorite brand? Um, I'll always read your comments and if, if I can, I'll always try and post a reply. All the best. Bye for now.